Great to have all of you here with us. I mean, it's it's a rare opportunity to have all of these heavy hitters together on one stage. And, uh, you know, what we really want to do here today, because Gaurav called me yesterday saying, I don't know what you're going to ask me. <laughs> I said, I really want to get your perspective as thought leaders, as experts, as those that are driving that inflection point of change for India over the next 25 years, what you see coming next. So let me start off uh, with, with each of you one by one. Lalit, why don't we begin with you? Uh, retail in itself is, is so fast moving, the constant question about omni, about what consumers want, about uh, further uh, you know, distribution. Where do you see things headed and how do you see them evolving? Yeah, hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, definitely a beautiful environment here. And thank you uh, for inviting us. See, I mean, definitely India is, uh, uh, is the nuclear bomb, and uh, which, is, which is the consumer, the population, the, the aspirational youth and the young families, uh, which has 50% or more than 50% of the population. I think we are about to blast. We are there as soon as our economy and our per capita income goes up by even 20%. Uh, the consumption is really going to dive up very, very superficially. And we, we, we have seen this even in the past. The moment we see, uh, we see the economy doing well, we see the consumption rate really goes up. And what we saw, largely VMART operates in value fashion across small town and what we have seen small town people's aspiration levels are very very high and they want to work more they want to earn more they do want to look good they do want to consume more they they haven't seen the real consumption they haven't seen the real 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 what what the internationally every people uses or even in the metros what we see and what we have seen so that is a real bharat which is almost 70 percent of india and when that starts consuming, that's still consuming, but they have a very, very constrained pocket. They have a very, very constrained budget. So still, even if their aspirations are high, they, they are not able to manage. And, and culturally, India is not used to taking debt and consuming. So they do consume only when they have money in their pocket. So that's how India is. But yeah, uh, what we see, uh, adoption across uh, omniculture or digitalization is definitely very, very high. It is, it is also... Uh, very, very clear that whenever people are getting money, their saving rates are predominantly from the earlier times, it has gone down, but their consumption rate is going up. What we are seeing, uh, more and more people want to come out, urbanization is improving, even in small villages, we are seeing small towns like tier 3, district level towns, a lot of people flocking from the villages to there, a lot of people from there flocking back to the capitals of the state. So that we are always seeing and this is now strengthening as the infrastructure in India is growing up, as we are seeing more and more positive news coming in from the government, from the Prime Minister, we are seeing so much of hopefulness in the eyes of young and the youth across these towns. So we, we get more than 30 million customers every year. We talk to them, we, we learn what are their habits. Sure. And, and there is definitely more and more which is going to come in, in terms of te technology adoption, digital adoption and omni omniculture. Arvind, let me get the layout from you, because uh, you see it from a slightly larger, you know, pulled out perspective. Sure. So I wish I was so smart to think 40, uh, 25 years hence, I will venture only for next time, which I think there is a certain amount of certainty. I believe India will be a $7.5 trillion economy, give or take 100 billion here and there by 2032. So from 3.2 trillion to about 7.5, we're adding about four, four and a half additional trillion dollars to the size of the economy if you convert it back to merchandise spending. We are looking at in Delta one trillion dollars of additional consumer spending. Now today consumer spends about 800 billion dollars on merchandises, merchandise. Extra one trillion dollar is a game changer because it's not only just an extra one trillion dollar, but $5,000 per capita income, 1.5 billion people, 7.5 trillion dollars. So 5,000 is more or less the number. In the past, we have seen that $3,000 per capita income translates to a different cycle of consumption. Inflation adjusted, maybe 5,000 would be when India will see a huge change. But the most transformational part about India, which I see in the next 10 years, is this all round pervasive impact of digital. 4G, 5G is an enabler. 
ONDC is, in my opinion, the, probably the most transformational public utility government of India is facilitating, I would say, not owning it. Now, from product delivery, uh, discovery to product delivery, if your entire pathway is digital, minus the physical logistics part of it, I think that is going to be the big transformation. It will impact all retailers. So me, just two days ago, I was somewhere else. Please don't use it as omni-channel. There is going to be no omni-channel as such. Manufacturer or brand and the consumer, you figure out for yourself what role you want to play in that. So that's my few. Got it. So how does this affect a segment like yours, Neeraj? Because we've, we've looked at um, change in consumer behavior, consumer tastes, uh, diversification of product offerings, but also segmentization in terms of, uh, you know, the, the kind of size of product offerings to, to cater to consumers of a much more wider array and to the masses. So let me just begin by uh, wishing everybody a good afternoon and thanking you for having uh, me here. And it's interesting, as Arvind said, you know, talking about 25 years ends for us, it's a little special meaning because we're celebrating 25 years in India since the sun Coca-Cola. So it's always good to reflect back on 25 years and then see what we're going to do. And uh, to the point which was made by Lalit about how consumerism is exploding and consumption is going to go up and the merchandise value that Arvind talked about, we also believe that in the next four years, we'll be able to achieve what we've done in 25 years. So we've got great goals, but that is all driven by what we're seeing happening around us in the country. So truly, uh, the skills, capabilities, and the business models and mindsets are changing. And not changing, they're transforming, and you've got to start thinking about at a completely different you know, uh, way about the business. Coca-Cola always talks about being available at the arm length of desire. You now need to talk about being available a click away. Right? And that requires completely different business models. It requires completely different skill sets in the people. Simple example, when we look at our execution in the marketplace at the physical retailer, we have a measure called right execution daily, which talks about are we available as the right SKU, right quantity, right price point. And now that has got evolved to something we call IRED, which is in the digital world where a consumer is clicking and looking for a beverage, what do they see? How do our products get merchandised? So completely different way of looking at things. In term, <coughs> go ahead. No. So in terms of the capability and the way we're working, and I agree that you know omni-channel is something that we talk about today. 25 years from now, it's going to be a choice before the consumer on how and who he wants or she wants to buy from. So we need to be ready for it. And for us, the critical piece is not to own the pathway to the customer or the consumer, but to make sure that our retailers and our consumers are able to find us online, are able to find us a click away, like I said, and how do we create those capabilities against it? So it's not about owning the, so we work with Uran, we work with uh, different uh, digital delivery systems. We have our own delivery system that we've launched called Wabi, where the retailers have a chance of ordering our products online. But for us, it's going to be a full suite of solutions that is going to get us where we want to be. So a very, very different world, and we are all gearing up for that. Amazing. So natural segue to the both of you uh, when all this conversation comes back to the tech boom and really how that's changing the entire landscape. Um, share with us, Nanita, let me come to you first. And, uh, you know, give us a sense of the change that you've seen being part of it as one of the early players and what you feel the next 15 years, 10 years, five years will be like. Sure. Uh, so thanks for uh, having us here today and uh, really great to be in this panel. Uh, I think, uh, you know, if you just look about how the ecosystem has evolved, there are around 600 million uh, internet users in the country, close to 200 million or 220 million of them are actually shopping online. I think the next wave, as everyone talks about, is everybody actually, all of the 400 million actually coming online. Uh, uh, and uh, that consumption actually being driven by all of the ecosystem coming together. So it's not omni, it's not online, it's not offline, but the entire digitization influencing consumption of this 
uh, trillion dollar, like seven and a half trillion dollar economy that uh, Arvind spoke about. I think uh, the trends that will shape the future are definitely going to be two. One is the tier two, tier three, and the expansion of digitization in those geographies. Uh, more than 50% of the consumers will start coming from these geographies. I think the second one is Gen Z. Uh, we will have the largest population of Gen Z consumers in the world. And they will shape a lot of new innovations that all of us will be forced to actually lead or adopt uh, as we go forward. Uh, you know, the way we look at it as we go forward in the future as part of Mintra is that there is a trifecta which will impact all of these two sets of consumers, whether it's the Gen Z consumers or the tier two, tier three consumers. Um, the first one being, uh, you know, the where inspiration comes from. I think inspiration today, especially when you talk of fashion, is not limited to what it was in the past, which was a few, like inspiration itself has exploded. So whether there's social media, social commerce, influencers, all of that have become part of the inspiration, uh, you know, tray of the consumers. And everybody uh, from Metro T1 to T2, T3 is getting inspired by the same set of merchandise and people. I think the second one will be convenience. Uh, you know, how are we able to make shopping fun for people, make, the, make it convenient for them, and a lot of innovation in the supply chain, in Omni, and helping consumers actually uh, across the physical and the digital ecosystem will happen. And I think the third is actually making uh, consumption and shopping more seamless. So whether they will be digital tools like, uh, you know, virtual try-ons or personalization, or even influencers and how we kind of engage with them through innovations like social commerce and MLive, which Mintra has pioneered, uh, are all going to be part of the secret recipe. So I think it's going to be about how do we service the inspiration of these consumers? How do we make it convenient for them? And how do we actually make it seamless, the journey of consumption as they try out new things uh, in their journey? So that's really how we look at it as we go forward into the next few years. Okay, yeah. some key indicators there. Um, Naya, you know what, what Nandita just alluded to in terms of how things are just changing so fast. Share with us some key takeaways from your own journey and as you're at the cusp of what promises to be a huge uh, leap of growth uh, at the group. How do you stay on top of some of these, uh, you know, very uh, fast changing um, nuances in the industry and the landscape? Sure. So, uh, first of all, a pleasure being here uh, and wonderful meeting uh, so many familiar faces. Um, you know, at the Gurglam group, the hypothesis has always been, um, you know, how do you build uh, probably for the first time in the world, a digital first FMCG house of brands. Right. Over the last year, we really accelerated. Abha, you've been, you know the story. Uh, we've made more than 12 acquisitions. Uh, we are now proud partners and, uh, and part of our portfolio is leading brands like Momsco, My Glam, Serona, Organic Harvest, etc. I think the, the, the whole premise, though, uh, which is now playing out beautifully, is uh, the journey of content to commerce uh, for us. And, you know, I think it comes back to the point that I think every panelist has pretty much made that as a brand, you have to be where the consumer is, right? And the consumer is now most definitively online. Right. That is where they're finding inspiration. That's why they're finding aspiration. If you look at even recent reports, I mean, of course, uh, in, in, you know, uh, you know, the rails, right, if you will, of the digital infrastructure. So UPI was one massive shift in terms of the payments infrastructure. Right. Now, if you're talking about data democracy and, you know, 80 percent of all household consumption, fashion, beauty, personal care choices made by women, the data democracy is also, of course, now reflecting in the trends you see in terms of urban women being 68 percent of them actually having access to data to mobile phones versus 79% men, right? That, that shift that, that, that has much uh, greatly narrowed now. So I think you're seeing women come online, you're seeing the payment infrastructure, the payment rails come into place. Um, and I think that is what is really helping us now create brands and sort of, you know, instead of creating brands that would take us generations to make. Uh, today you see in India, uh, brands being created which now have the aspiration to not just take over the Indian retail market and capture the minds of the Indian consumers but also go global. Um, so I think that's the big sort of I would say uh, aspirational shift in terms of where the consumers are coming from there how do you shape their aspirations through content through influencers but equally the aspirations the brands that are addressing this market right not just playing to an Indian demographic but saying this is a larger market today yes but how do you also play and become a global brand learning what you are from the Indian retail landscape so I think that's really where I see the trend go and I think 
Indian brands today are really hungry, really ambitious. And I think that, by the way, is one of the biggest shifts you've seen over this decade. We can see that. And we're <laughs> super excited about it as well to see the next uh, set of unicorns and, and more coming out of, uh, uh, you know, this generation. Gaurav, of course, I've saved uh, the best for last in terms of entertainment and how that's going to play a role in this entire landscape. Uh, you know, talking about consumption, talking about millennials, how are you shaping your strategy uh, with the idea of the boom that's to come? Thanks. First of all, thank you for having us here. It's a pleasure. I think uh, the streaming industry and entertainment at large has had fantastic last five, seven years. Um, some thanks to the tailwinds uh, of ubiquitous devices, affordable data, young population, and some because of the del very deliberate efforts of high quality content, uh, you know, looking at identifying white spaces and then going after it with the variety of business models. So, uh, you know, I would divide it with the trends in three parts. I think one on the consumer level and choice of customers, one at creator level because they're a very important part of our stakeholder community and there is no content without the creators. And then the business models that come into play. I think at the, at the, the biggest change happening at the consumer level is the fact that today you have so much choice that the customers have uh, from both local and international. And the big change that is sweeping us all is the fact that the, the linguistic palette of our customers is expanded. It's no longer about you know, just one or two languages. It's about the fact that you're now consuming content seamlessly across four or five languages and it's becoming, it's not just my la first language of choice. Now that is quite a thing to rattle your head with because when you look at that, as you look at your strategy to select content, you, you don't necessarily say, I want to only program X for X. Of course, we celebrate the heterogeneity and the multicultural nature of India and, and that's the most amazing part for us. Uh, and therefore we program in 10 languages. But now you add a new power to that by saying, whatever I create for a segment of customers X can actually appeal to segment Y and Z as well. Suddenly the, the force multiplier of that is of a different nature. Uh, and this is true for Indian languages. We've seen how Malayalam cinema, for example, has gone through the country and everybody loves it and other languages as well. But you're also seeing international content this way and you see Indian content go abroad. So that's one part of it. Second, this customer is extremely discerning and, and therefore, uh, if you then go and segue into the youth of that, uh, and the youth is making very deliberate choices, you know, they, they follow this whole piece about like, we want highest quality, we want lots of variety, and we want experimentation. So how do you do that? So I think those things on the customer side. On the creator side, the opportunity is tremendous because now this target segment and the market has expanded rap increasingly with streaming. You're no longer about, I'm only confining yourself to this. Second, on the, on the talent side, you know, it's not only about the biggest stars, it's about creating stars. And you're seeing lots of stars being created and new people coming in in the space. And third, on the business model side, I think the way we look at it is that there's a variety of models. There's ad supported, there's stream, there's subscription, there's hybrid, there's, you know, there are models which you have value added services. But important point with streaming is doing today is that it's such an integral part of the entire industry. It's really fueling growth of it. The film industry has such a high contribution of not just the capital from this, but the reach this drives for them. Similarly, the telecom business, the data consumption video is a very integral part of that, right? And therefore, I think the, it's playing a very pivotal role in growth of this and fueling hundreds of thousands of jobs across the board. So the, the force for good that the streaming is bringing in is tremendous. And yeah, it's just, uh, we're just getting started. So I want to ask all of you because the, the Indian customer is, is a tough cookie, right? We all know that. We all know that uh, they're very price sensitive. We know there's a lot of competition, of course, with so many brands and now so much access that's been created. So what are some of the key challenges you also face as businesses in the space uh, when it comes to attracting, retaining and driving that growth? Naya? Um, so if you'd asked me this question about two years back, I'd say the biggest challenge we face is the challenge of CAC. Right, because you're absolutely you're right. I mean, the Indian consumer and the customer is extremely price sensitive, right? And they're looking for the best bargains, the best deals, right? Uh, and when you're a house of brands or a DTC company, uh, you have you have a very healthy gross margin structure, but you know within that the entire sort of construct, the highest amount that you pay is actually the marketing costs. 
uh, which is why most companies bleed. I think where we've been able to find a solve, uh, and we continue to, of course, build on that, has been in our investments in content and creators. I think everyone has kind of talked about content creators on this panel. And for us, you know, post the acquisitions we've done in terms of the content assets, we've seen our CAC reduce to almost half a dollar, which is the lowest in the industry. So every month now we're, I was sharing with someone else, every month we're acquiring close to 700,000 new customers on the group brands. Right? I think that for us has been a big, big unlock. Of course, now I think the challenge still remains in terms of, uh, you know, as we sort of, and we're looking for an acquisition actually there, in terms of if you want to be a 10,000 crore company, right? How do you actually also meaningfully reach them where the customer is, which is also offline? So I think in terms of finding a great partner or a great asset for us, which has the points of sale offline that helps us exponentially increase the 35,000 points of sale, is I think the big challenge that we're trying to unlock right now. Uh, from a group perspective. I would say that's where we are uh, on a group basis. Okay, Mr. Agarwal? Yeah, I think uh, for a, uh, I mean, we call right now, till now we had, we were calling ourselves a big and motor retailer and to become an omni retailer, uh, uh, it's all about the culture and the culture which is coming up in India, uh, primarily driven by private equity money uh, towards digital shopping. Uh, is becoming a little difficult uh, where returns are coming up very high in numbers. There are a lot of frauds coming up. Logistic partners are not too aligned. And, and I think, you know, uh, uh, largely uh, it has to be alignment internally in the company, in the, in, the, in the organization as well. Adoption in the organization, see change of culture within the organization. So I would call culture is a big challenge that we need to watch out for. Then definitely... Uh, if, if, if I just speak about the big and motor, uh, it is a competitive world. Uh, once again, as you rightly said, this customer is the toughest customer. And within the Indian customer, the customer who is at the lower and the middle strata of the economy and the aspiring customer wants the best quality, wants the best fashion, wants the best prices available and, and the most of the convenience. So, so we need to offer everything together with the profitability in our organization as well. So profitability is the biggest challenge which is going to come in for retailers and omni retailers and digital retailers, which is already there. So that's how we have to realize that what is the reality. We need to sustain Whatever we do, we need to sustain and keep doing it. That's how we become larger and bigger in the next 25 years. We can't just keep losing money to, sustain, to, to build the businesses. Arvind, what do you see as some of the biggest challenges and which are the segments, uh, you know, in terms of industries or, you know, product segments or services that you feel will drive this growth overall when it comes to e-commerce? So I think if I were to see next two, three years and then a bit longer, I think the single biggest opportunity from a merchandise point of view is in packaged food and food services. So if you again, let me drop some data. So <laughs> if it is about 800, 850 billion dollars of merchandise spending, 550 billion dollars, 550, nearly 65 percent, is on food and food services. Most of it is in the so-called loose, unorganized, semi-organized segment. The consumer wants a bit more packaging, a bit more branding, a bit better quality as income levels and aspirations increase. So the single biggest opportunity area for growth, according to me, is food in whichever form. Second one is the category, which of course Naya is also in there. I think looking good, feeling good. So skin care, personal care, body care, indulgence for self. That's a new mindset shift as far as consumers are concerned. The young people are not so young as well finally don't have the guilt for spending money on themselves. We are used to in this society that you know spending is not good, consumption is bad, look after your family, your parents, children, blah, 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 whatever else. I think finally the <laughs> we don't have to worry about saying, look, if I want to spend X thousand rupees on just putting a body wash, uh, so be it. So skin and body care in some ways is actually, having such that the absolute numbers are still very small, let's not get too carried away from a data point of view. These are two areas which I see happening. If I were to look three to five years, a bit more, I think entertainment, and Gaurav talked about a bit more uh, about this, he knows much more. I think it's also a society which finally says that, look, merchandise is for needs. Entertainment is what I'm living for. Games, sports, travel, leisure. So bulk of the aspiration. Even shopping is entertainment. No longer, sir. I'm sorry to say that, but in my opinion, shopping would be a neat. Uh, uh, but entertainment forms will be very, very different. So to me, I would be 
very closely monitoring which new forms of entertainment uh, which are now catching the fancy of consumers they will spend disproportionate amount of their time and money on just recreation in some form merchandise yes there is aspiration at times there will be experience needed but i think the center of gravity in terms of where money will be spent and you can charge value is going to be entertainment so food and skin and personal care short term entertainment in various forms is i think the bigger growth story for india you want to come in on that gaurav yeah <laughs> no i i think uh... I agree in some ways on the point. I, I, I think of the industry's challenges as exactly differently as the opportunity. And I think, from our point of view, in a very fast-growing industry, we um, and I can give you some perspective from what Prime Video sees it. You know, we already see consumption from 99% of countries zip codes, 40 by 100 towns and cities across the country. So this misnomer that actually paid streaming is only for metros and big cities is is completely incorrect. it's already deeply penetrated however that comes with us the challenge or the opportunity of having to satisfy that customers entertainment needs day after day week after week with amount of content that engages you know so therefore you to create content and has apply content continuously you drop a season of a show the show gets over people want the next season next morning like so it takes time so so obviously at the pace at which we can continue creating Uh, and uh, and acquiring and curating content is is the challenge but the opportunity to actually uh, you know sort of satisfy that customer need part one i think the second one is keeping the quality bar high of that content uh, because it's not about the volume um, and, and the fact is there was a big change required uh, which we have all been working through the industry is working through if you looked at the in indian you know shows because of our business model in the tv era of entertainment only all the shows were a particular structure because the co commerce of the business required that episodic serialized hundreds of episodes you know dailies and nothing wrong with it just that the commerce required backfitted there but as you got to streaming you could make this high quality world class you know cinematic value series uh, it also you you could put that out but it required the change in the the technicians art form understanding that and we have some of the most amazing creators in the industry who quickly adapted to it so unlike the us which were making these series for 25 years for the premium pay cable we never had premium pay cable we actually had the basic cable right so we had to adopt quickly and we all doing that that's great the third is i think in that comes the commerce and economics of it we have to make sure the cost structures are sensible you know as we go forward but you also have to be very conscious of the fact that not only are we heterogeneous in terms of our taste there but also affordability yeah. and therefore the models we will use to have high reach so therefore for example we have different models for different people uh, different uh, you know sort of packs for different customers so we also offer besides the whole prime program you can also have prime video mobile edition which you only want the mobile plan you work with telecom companies to offer packs which are you know worked with data and so on so i think the interesting thing for us is there is the demand exists how do you fulfill that demand uh, from great quality of content sustainably continuously keeping the bar high and offer it in in forms that customers can then use it and then love more and come in day after day so it's the thing for the industry and it's it's quite exciting i if you don't mind want to tackle it from a slightly different perspective i mean it's great to hear that you know you need to get consumers affordability is important productivity is critical with all the cost challenges how efficient supply chain that all remains part of the business but those are decisions we've been grappling with over the last few decades but as we look forward and we start engaging our customer and now with the democratization of choices that being made what's the edge that we have and what we believe is that we can only be sustainable for the next 137 years that we've been around if we actually create sustainable communities so for us the challenge in the business is how do we grow our business in a sustainable manner you know we are accused of creating mountains of plastic but what people probably don't realize is in india we actually enable an equal amount of plastic collection and that goes for recycling as we put out we are supposed to be using water but today we put back 125% of the total water we use across the country back into the earth now the fact is it's not evenly spread so the big challenge for us is how in the next 3 years every aquifer we touch is 100% water neutral 
because we truly believe that the consumers of today and tomorrow are going to walk uh, vote for the brand that they trust and they want to buy with their wallets only if you're able to connect with them so sustainability is a very important part of the business today and how do we continue to invest behind it and grow our business i want to create another hindustan coca cola in 4 years what we've done in 25 that means the challenge is even bigger carbon footprint we now planting 25 lakh trees starting this year 25th anniversary so we're doing that 5 lakh go in this year we want to create an app where real time geo coded you can look at how the trees are doing so it's not just a carbon wash but actually you can see what's happening to the trees and are we doing a difference and that is what we believe will start making a difference to our communities and to our stakeholders and that is what will create a business dynamic environment for us to accelerate further okay nandita yeah I agree with what uh, you just said I think there is of course supply chain uh, disruption and supply and democratization of choice but I think what will allow for businesses to keep uh, winning uh, or or keep being relevant in this uh, environment is actually going to be innovation and sustainability I think those are the two areas innovation for sure I think for us at Mintra also uh, how do we innovate for the for the ever you know ex expanding choices that the consumers have so whether it is we spoke about convenience so you know we 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 launched something called mintra express which is about a 48 hour delivery for fashion uh, products or social commerce which we've uh you know navi also spoke about which is content to commerce how do you seamlessly integrate it as part of the shopping journey in itself uh or uh, you know how do you help consumers with innovations like virtual try ons or size or fit uh how do you participate in the ecosystem that the d2c brands are creating because t2 t3 consumers really have a uh, very very niche needs and how do you really cater to them so i think what will help you bring that edge is innovation and sustainability because over a period of time it consumers will also start demanding this of us how sustainable are we uh, as as organizations as brands uh, mintra for earth uh, better cotton initiative are all the things that we partner with but our belief is that innovation is what is going to take us forward as we as we look at this expansion of choice which is for the good uh, of the ecosystem you know there was a there was a time when you had to have one product to really you know be successful and today you seem to need a suite of things to cater to the consumer while they have maybe several uh, companies or brands to choose from they still want to have a full suite or full stack uh, solution wherever they decide to go is that a challenge as a business how do you choose how do you choose what to prioritize uh, you know where to connect with them which points to connect with them on because there could be so many i could i could give you a example of how we think about it um you know while we create a whole host of great programming and shows and movies and all of that we also understand that our customers actually want lots of other content and many other services and and brands are creating amazing shows and content so so what we look at this is actually we build a marketplace model alongside our core sport service by adding prime video channels so we've got many many of our partners on board who actually come along and we offer their channels alongside prime video you can actually subscribe to them by a single click and so on similarly we offer a whole host of rental films which you can actually rent alongside our catalog because customers needs are a lot and we while we all try to strive to do that you know we have to respect the set and offer the selection and, and this country is all about the and and not the or so we have to keep you know saying what else can we do um, so yeah i totally agree with you Naya, yeah, yeah. I, I do want to. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah, I do want to call out. I think uh, um, you know, as a group, we're extremely particular, obviously, about the uh, the customer love, right? That we have for the products that we bring to market. And I think the way we've approached our brand strategy is that we need to be relevant. Um, um, I'm talking about the personal and beauty care brand strategy, right? We need to be relevant to people at different points in their journey. So if you look at, um, you know, for instance, Myglam. which is a beauty brand now within that we have a portfolio of 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 uh, products that you know works very well with early jobbers right there's a portfolio of product that works very very well with teen girls right so i think and there we basically you know then we have moms go and we have baby chakra right those products work very well with moms right we have organic harvest that's for a more discerning consumer who's looking at more organic solutions it's actually reading the label and saying these are nutrition dense products for me right so we have we have you know products on sexual health and intimate hygiene with serona right so i think at each point 
um so while yes in a way you're right i mean maybe the same consumer is going through this journey and is looking at different solutions and therefore you have to have this wide array of skews that you serve to her but i think at each point what we really track very closely is she moving from one sort of product portfolio to the other and number two while she's in that journey do we have incredibly strong uh, repeat and uh, retention cohorts right and i think that by the way is something we extremely put, i think d2c brands really watch out for and the, the 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 i think the big sort of benefit perhaps and the privilege we have is because we are genuinely d2c we actually do most of our sales on our own platform we able to track uh these cohorts very closely so we see more than 40 45% repeat cohorts uh on our product uh, portfolio uh, uh, uh skews right so i think yes yes you're right while people will demand an array i think in different stages in their life if as a brand you're able to generate strong nps strong consumer loyalty and strong brand love i think that's the holy grail for all of us there was you know a, a little bit of you know we've got we've got the digital brand saying they're looking for offline we've got the offline brand uh, you know wistfully talking about the advent of digital arvind you know is there really you know a one stop solution that we're going to see or is it going to continue to be a combination of some of these formats as we move forward so i think the trends are relatively clear in some categories yeah. the product discovery takes place typically online the fulfillment today is still being done either online or offline but if i were to hazard a guess other than food and grocery a lot of things will be also then bought and got it delivered online so the trend is not about saying look customers shopping online and offline the discovery part is very clear yeah. that it is largely moving towards online now here the fun part is there uh the moment a customer starts to leave a footprint of what she is looking for if you are a brand you are smart you can tailor made your product offer uh, there i know more than one company now which have stopped doing the forecasting of what the customer trends are basically they are encouraging people to come to their website they put trial products which are not in their physical stores based on the customer analytics in terms of what they're looking for those products are then built to put in physical uh, retail outlet so that's what is happening nandita are there interesting anecdotes that are thrown up through the data that you must be tracking as well uh, i think uh, i'll just build on the point of uh, two things actually which uh, both arvind and gaurav spoke about one is discovery being online i think there is a lot of inspiration that's happening online and therefore how do you really seamlessly build that content to commerce so mintra studio mintra live are all examples in that direction but i think the interesting part is about partnerships as you want to kind of like consumers are fashion is aspirational people want more and that more can only happen through partnership so as you go into the area of content to commerce or that discovery uh, how do you partner with influencers with brands to actually build that and and create an ecosystem which is thriving in that sense so i think for me uh, that partnership actually comes through in everything that you build uh, uh, as an ecosystem because without that it will be very difficult to uh, live up to the expectations of the indian consumer i think that's where the indian consumer is okay. very discerning <laughs> So closing comment Gaurav in terms of a forward looking outlook market size i mean we've talked about ambition today uh, we've talked about the enormous growth we are seeing across these categories uh, where do you really see india in terms of opportunity and on the globe's global stage i think 5 years is a good enough target yeah 5 years is <laughs> enough time i i think i think uh, i see three trends one is the fact that there'll be in 4 or 5 years there'll be as many people streaming video in india as they are watching tv today right so that and variety of models will emerge that's one second uh, the fact that indian content already is breaking through globally in a big way we see 20% of our consumption of our original shows happening outside india we see will be mainstream in the international market when it comes to indian content movies and shows and this linguistic palette expansion will continue to go even further and you will see this becoming more and more natural today we see half our customers streaming in over four language content in four, four languages uh, we'll see that expanding even more so creating a bigger market segment for all the creators uh, ultimately it'll be about super serving that customer and we'll all aim for that and i think it's just the beginning this called as you can say in amazon it's day one Okay. Thank you all so much for joining us today and uh, sharing some remarkable insights into really how the ecosystem's shifting and look forward to India 
at 100. A big round of applause, please. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe. 